We're on page uh, 97. This is exercise 26. And um, we'll start by looking at the heart rate, which is approximately 72 beats per minute. There are P waves present and upright, and they seem to be consistent in morphology. Um, the PR interval, this is the, the hallmark, the key here in this rhythm. The PR interval appears to be increasing in length. If we look at the PR interval here, it's um, not quite as long as this one here. And then we have this P wave that, that stands alone. And then we have this short PR interval. And then the cycle begins again. Prolonged PR interval, even longer still. And then this P wave that stands alone. And then a short PR interval again. And this is a classic of a particular dysrhythmia. And I'm going to let you think about that if you haven't already written it down in your workbook. The QRS is narrow. It's uh, less than 0 0.12 second. Although, you know, at a glance, it looks kind of wide-ish, but, um, but it is narrow. And the ratio varies. You'll notice it's uh, 1 to 1 and sometimes 2 to 1. Here it's a P wave QRS, P wave QRS. But here we have P wave, P wave QRS. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio there. And that's also consistent with a specific um, dysrhythmia. And the rhythm is irregular. So if you haven't already figured it out, when we have um, uh, an increasingly uh, increasing PR interval length uh, where there are drop beats, and sometimes we have a 2 to 1 ratio, and the rhythm is irregular, this is a second degree AV block type 1, also known as Winky Bach with a heart rate of approximately 72 beats per minute. So again, the key here is, Look for the dropped beat. So here's the P wave that stands alone, and the PR interval before it is long, and the PR interval after it is short. Right? That's the classic second degree of your block type 1 or Winky Bach. Dropped P wave with a prolonged PR interval before it, a shorter PR interval after it by comparison. Um, you know, you might have noticed the, the T wave here, which is kind of flattened. Well, again, the T wave morphology is completely and utterly irrelevant to our rhythm interpretation. Just keep that in mind, right? The, the key here is dropped P wave, prolonged PR interval before, shortened PR interval afterwards. And um, once again, this is a, an example of Winky Bach, which was generated by a rhythm simulator. So it's not the typical Winky Bach that you would see in the field or in the hospital. Uh, more commonly, when you see Winky Bach, you'll see long stretches of ECG, two, three, four feet long, before you'll see a P wave that stands alone. And, um, you know, this P wave stands alone with a prolonged PR interval before and a short PR interval afterwards. Now, I should mention, there's one other thing that mimics a Winky Bach where we see a standalone P wave. And that's something called a non-conductive premature atrial complex. And, uh, or non-conducted PAC. And when you see a non-conducted PAC, um, you'll see a peer interval before it and afterwards that are consistent. And um, I'm just going to see if I can draw this out here. So what you would see, this isn't the best drawing of ECGs, but um, so we'll say that this is uh, a normal underlying rhythm. And um, whoops, I'm just going to draw a P wave here. Uh, and then a P wave, QRS. And when you see a non-conductive PAC, classically the P wave is superimposed on the preceding T wave, and the peer interval before is exactly the same as the peer interval afterwards. That's a non-conducted uh, PAC, premature atrial complex. And this is different from Winky Bach, where we have the P wave that stands alone, but the peer interval before is long. The PR interval afterwards is short.